how does the word tranny make me feel? Um, it does make you feel really any type of way. You know, I say it a lot. Um, and I feel like even if someone were to say it in like a negative way to me, it'd be more so funny. <laughs> like, really? That's the insult? Like, I don't know. I would do something worse, like call someone a piece of shit or an asshole or, you know, yeah. tranny is just like a funny word to me. Yeah. But I think that the modern trans movement is all about policing language and that's why I have such a big problem with it. And that's mm -hmm. why I'm kind of known as like the black sheep trans person where I'm always critiquing that shit because it's crazy. The shit that's happening now. I mean, it wasn't even happening when I started transitioning. It's, this is a new kind of thing. So when did you start transitioning? Um, I was 20 and I'm 29 now. So wow, that was a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, it wasn't back then like it is now, you know, there wasn't all these non-binary people. There wasn't the like cultural and political like push that there is now. In fact, it was relatively under the radar. Like people, yeah. people kind of inherently knew it was a thing like, oh mm -hmm. yeah, some people do that. But now it's so in your face all the time and it's become like a main cultural football which is so crazy to me do you feel put at risk by all that shit what shit like the, the fact mm. that it's so focused on you know the that trans activism which is oh like yeah pissing everybody off oh yeah i i say this all the time i see that as way more of a threat than someone who maybe just doesn't understand the fact that I'm trans and maybe is predisposed to disliking me for it because those people can always be swayed once they understand that I'm a normal person and I'm kind and all those good things. Whereas the way leftists deal with it, they don't talk about that shit because they care about trans people. They talk about right. it because they can use it to their benefit. Right. You know, in fact... Because there were always trans women in the bathrooms. Mm -hmm. But, you know, they, they acted, you know, they fit, they didn't stand there with their you know, dicks and stuff, you know. Right. They just went to the bathroom, washed their hands and left. Right. That's the why good I, old days. <laughs> the, the good old days. That's why I always say, like, if it was really a problem with real transsexuals, then it would have always been a problem, but it, like, wasn't, you know. Right, it's, it's it this, wasn't. It's this new thing because we're in this culture now where if someone says they are something, then they just are. So a lot of women will look at that and be like, oh, all these trans people are saying they're women, so I have to believe them. That's fucked up. And I, on another level, look at like all the trans people who say that just because they're trans, I have to believe them because I look at them up and down and I'm like, you're actually a fetishist. You're actually a predator. You're actually a cross-dresser. And that's very different than a transsexual. And there was once a time where that was understood even among yeah. transsexuals. We were like, there's a difference between cross-dressers and this because their purpose is a fetish. It's sexual. They're attracted to women. Whereas, mm -hmm. you know, people like me, it's like, I just, I just like dudes. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> it's like a whole thing. Yeah. And well, nobody can understand anybody, can they? Not really. No, no. And you know what? The older I get, the more I understand that everyone's kind of like just mentally ill in a different way. Mm -hmm. You know? Like everyone is crazy. and But everybody sane draws the line at kids, right? Right. But what's so crazy is that that line is now being taken away, right? It's like... They're trying to. Yeah. You have the corporate press attacking the sound of freedom. You have... To anyone with a set of two eyes and two brain cells to rub together, you can see that there's absolutely a coordinated push to normalize pedophilia, you know. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's the trans surgeries, that's one front, but like on a bigger scale, mm -hmm. it's, you know, the pedophilia. Because also the trans kid thing, I think, is explained in a lot of ways by like the over-medicalization of children in general. Like, mm -hmm. you know, a kid who is restless in class, so all of a sudden he has to be put on Adderall at nine years old. You know? Right, exactly. So we always medicalize kids. It's all, it's always big pharma getting their big old claws in the government money. Putting their big fucking dick in everyone's ass with no lube, you no know? No shit. Yeah. And it's, but what's crazy is there was also a time where people understood that, that big pharma was, you know, you couldn't say that without a negative connotation. And now, you know, you have libs supporting big pharma. Yeah. They're pro-war. Predator, they, they support predatory predatory businesses but you saw it even during like lockdowns and covid where all the libs supported the biggest transfer of wealth in human history which yeah. was you know every local business gets to be shut down for three uh -huh. years and their lives get to be ruined but walmart's open target's open amazon you know, amazon's still shipping faster than ever mm -hmm. you know it's like scary how fast stuff from amazon gets to you like well because they were all children of rich people the whole left is privileged. Oh, for sure. And that's another thing. Bringing it back to, like, 
the tranny shit, the way they've co-opted the tranny shit and made that like their frontier. Uh huh. It's not because they, they got care. tired of using the black people and the gays got old. Uh huh. The know? gays got old. Yeah. Right. But it's also like you know, it's not born They're out of care. We're warming up the Palestinians that are here now. Mm, right. Right. But it's like you know with. The trans shit in particular, when you look at a lot of the crazy shit like on Twitter, when you see like a really bad take, like, you know, 12 year olds should be able to have their dicks cut off. It's like some, mm. sometimes there's trans people saying that. So there's no denying that. But 90 percent of the time, it's some white liberal basic bitch. Mm. No shit, girl. Right. Who's probably never met a trans person in her life, in but her feels life. so comfortable abdicating for things that she thinks I have to believe in, which, you know, I Cause she's doing that. Reading your mind and becoming you, subsuming your personality like vampires do. <laughs> and that white guilt bullshit where, mm -hmm. you know, that's why when you look at the mm -hmm. non-binary and trans explosion among like white kids, because they're raised in a culture now that is very like, you have to feel guilt for being white. So they need some sort of minority status in the to easiest feel, way. To feel um, vic as a victim. And then that turns on your self-righteous indignation, which brings on your taking to the streets, which brings on your being mass arrested and incarcerated or shipped off to fight in the Ukraine, as planned. Right, it's one big pipeline, mm -hmm. you know. But it's also, I think it goes deeper than just needing to feel like a victim. It's also like, I think a lot of straight white people genuinely feel when they're indoctrinated by you know when they're blue pilled they actually feel like bad about it they think they are a bad person because there are those things so they think they can you know sort of transition for lack of a better term into the good territory by they having switch. some sort of the word is a mm -hmm. switch they want to switch their guilt right 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 you but, lived in hollywood oh yeah it's, you know nothing but a bunch of devil worshiping devil worshiping bitches right and it's also just the energy in general is so demonic and it weighs you down and you don't realize it until you leave mm -hmm. like when i got to texas it was like i didn't know i didn't remember what it was like to be around people who were nice i didn't either it blew my effing mind yeah it was a crazy adjustment for me so i grew up in a really small christian town like very religious where uh, Northern California, which for people who don't know, Northern California, at least back in my day, like 90s, early 2000s, that was Kansas. That was Arkansas. Yeah. That was very rural. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's behind Southern California in a lot of ways. Behind, you know. Scariest fucking place I've ever been. It, 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 what's the name of the town? Stockton? Corning, California. Oh, fuck but yeah. But Stockton is hell on earth. Uh huh. No, I know. I'm Stockton's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but so I grew up in a very, like, small Christian town and, like, you know, I was getting called a faggot by five. You know, I was naturally, my mannerisms were the same as they are now, you know, uh, the way I walked, etc. And so people saw that in me before I saw it in myself. And so I was bullied really heavily. I fought a lot as a kid. And, you know, I was fighting religious Christian people and their, and their kids, not the adults, obviously. Um, <laughs> well, that'd be crazy. <laughs> Just getting beat up by parents. Oh, my God. No, I was fighting their snot-nosed little shitty kids. Uh, but, but so I kind of had obviously until my like young adulthood, like a resentment towards that archetype of person. Um, and it wasn't until I saw the world start to get really, really dark that I understood like, you know, people like that are so necessary just to keep things going, mm -hmm. you know, like maybe it's something like you're lost on your four wheeler for four or five minutes, or maybe it's like you've really been a victim of something and you're bloody on someone's like doorstep needing help. Um, people like that keep society together in a lot of ways they sure do. and when you see like true and i'm not someone who actually does necessarily believe in god or, or not believe i would like to be pilled on it but you know i feel like i have seen godlessness though yeah you have in the sense we all have yeah. yeah you know i don't want to keep bringing you back to covid but you know like during that time period i feel like is when i really saw it was you know i lived in hollywood and people were like what part of hollywood i lived in hollywood hollywood i was one street from the boulevard and uh you know at one point there was like forty thousand people on the boulevard and i saw like the really scary like mob mentality you know cop cars on fire military tanks on my street and you know it really woke me up to be like all of these people 
regardless of if they claim religion or not, they are completely godless, at least in the sense of they don't have anything. There's no bigger picture for them. There's no sense of good or evil for them. And some people really need that to not burn fucking cities down, which is what they were doing. So, you know, I don't know if I believe in God, but I believe in godlessness in the sense of how it makes people behave.